Alright, when it comes to Apple or any other stocks, we have two choices to make. We can either buy what Apple makes, so its products and services too, which is wonderful, right? It brings innovation after innovation, along with a groundbreaking experience to make our life easier and also more productive. Or we can choose to invest in Apple, so owning a piece of ownership of Apple forever. This is the paradox of choices, and let's see which one to choose. Welcome back to the channel and today let's talk about the paradox of choices we have between investing Apple versus buying Apple. Alright, 5 years ago, Apple released the iPhone X or 10, which marked the 10th anniversary of the iPhone. And it completely revolutionized the iPhone lineup as a whole. High quality display, great overall design, great camera and face ID too. And it came at a whopping $999, which was the most expensive iPhone ever launched. But Apple could do it and people bought it because it was simply a great phone. Now, 10 years ago, Apple released the staggering iPhone 5. And for our money, it is the last iPhone that really was me with its debut before the iPhone X rolled around, of course. And it showed Apple at the top of its smartphone game. And the iPhone 5 is gorgeously designed, sleek and slim, with a 4-inch retina display. Its 8-megapixel camera could now shoot 1080p videos and included a panorama mode. It was also the first iPhone to support 4G, so faster downloads and upload speed too. And when it first got released, the full price for an unlocked iPhone 5 was $649 for the 16 gigabyte model. Now, 15 years ago, Apple released the iPhone. The original iPhone changed everything. It started the era of touch devices that has resulted in billions of modern smartphones and tablets too sold around the world. It is difficult for us to overstate the importance of the first iPhone. I mean, without it, where would phones be today? Someone would probably have sorted a touchscreen phone, right? But Apple did it while bringing the best quality it could to ensure the best user experience. It was the first smartphone to introduce a full touchscreen, making it easier to navigate and use compared to phones with physical keyboards. The iPhone's interface was intuitive and easy to use, making it accessible to a wide range of people. And its connectivity paired with its App Store could enhance the functionality of the phone. And it came at a price of $499 for the base 4GB model. So yeah, overall pretty cool. The iPhone lineup always got better and better with new and improved functionality and design too. And it also comes at a staggering price of $2,147 or 2014 euros. So that is the price you would have paid if you had bought the three best iPhones every five years since the first iPhone. All right, now, what if you had invested those $2,000 into the Apple stock. So instead of buying each phone, you would have invested the same amount on the same day of each keynote. Investing $500 in Apple in 2007 would be worth $20,000 today. And with that much money, you could go out and buy 49 Apple watches. In 2012, this $649 investing in Apple would be worth $4,000 right now. With that much money, you could buy four iPad Pro today. And investing $1,000 in 2017 would be worth $3,600 right now. With that much money today, you could buy 20.3 AirPods third generations. And that is only $11 invested in the stock market for the past 15 years. And with all of those earnings combined, you could have a Tesla Model 3. I mean, renewed, but still a Tesla Model 3. Now, there is one major issue with that invest versus Apple thing. How do we know what Apple will be worth in one month, one year, and 10 years? This alone is the trickiest part to find, and chances are you will be wrong. So, for example, what do you think will be the next move here? As always, three possibilities. Up, down or sideways. In fact, Apple lost 45% of its value in a month. That happened because of the pandemic. Because of the COVID-19, everything got shut down and people got scared and sold. So right at the beginning of 2019, your investments would have lost 45% of its value. And this gives us the first most valuable lesson when it comes to investing in AAPL or any other stocks. Always think in the long term. You are most likely to be right in five to 10 years than in the next five days. Which brings us to how to know if AAPL Apple is actually a good stock to buy. So always keep in mind that the price of Apple does not have anything to do with its value. Let's get back to 2019. Did Apple sell 45% less products and services when its price also lost 45%? No, Apple continued to deliver great products and great services for the past decades, no matter what happened to the world and the economy. And that is exactly what we want to look at for any other companies, a great business with stable earnings at a cheap price. So earnings have to be stable and still consistently grow. As investors, we want to see 10 to 15% a year on average. And Apple did a pretty good job at increasing its revenue and earnings too, at a 
good rates of 17% a year on average for the past five years. So that means if the first year Apple's net income was about $100 billion, then the second year it would be $117 billion, then $136 billion, etc. For example, Microsoft also did a pretty good job at increasing its earnings each year. Another great example is Roblox, which is a stock to avoid right now. As you can see, it is going in the opposite direction. And pretty funny too. We also have the price to earnings ratio. And this ratio alone already gives you a rough view of the stock itself. You can find it on most websites. I also like to use Google Finance for that. It is this number right there. And if you want to, you can also do the math yourself. Take the price of one share, so $150.47, and divide it by the earnings per shares, so 5.89. Usually, the average is 20 to 25, and if a stock is lower than that, it might be undervalued, so the stock might be worth more. If a stock is higher than that, it might be overvalued, so the stock might be worth less. And during the COVID outbreak, Apple had a P ratio of 15, so that means Apple was selling at only 15 times its earnings. A pretty good buy, in my opinion. Next, I love to look at the dividends. So a portion of their profits given to investors. And Apple has been paying out dividends continuously for more than 34 years now, for a current dividend yields of roughly 0.62%. Is this something good? or not. So when we think about dividends, we have to look at three main components. Dividends have to be paid out by the company for at least the past 15 years. Otherwise, we wouldn't have enough data to make sure that their dividends are good enough. Dividends also have to increase at a stable and almost predictable rate. For the past 10 years, Apple has always increased them regularly without any interruptions at all. And talking about that, dividends cannot be cut. And that would be a really bad sign for you and the stock itself, because that means that the company does not have enough and a good enough management to make sure that it can pay out dividends. So you want to look for a long record of increasing dividends and nothing else. For example, Johnson & Johnson decreased its dividends for the first time since 21 because of the pandemic and its effects on the economy and social life too. And I am just saying, what if one day something bad happens again? Johnson & Johnson might not be able to sustain an increasing dividend payout in the long term. And trust me, you will always have unpredictable events that will make the market and the stock market as a whole move in unpredictable directions. So we've talked about Apple's biggest mode, what to look for and what to avoid too when you buy a stock. Now let's talk about what's next for Apple for the next few years. Apple has to push things even further now. It already makes stunning devices and software too, mixing amazing experiences with great design. They always give their best to release the best features that already exist, right? Right, but they do it in the Apple way. So same feature, but well implemented across all devices to ensure the best possible use of it. All right, the first thing to pay attention to is of course, the iPhone. It is 54% of their total revenue for 2022 alone. So it means that half of their revenue relies on the iPhone lineup only. And for the past five years, since the iPhone X or 10, nothing really pushed the iPhone further, right? They only released incremental innovations, so small tweaks, things and features too to make the iPhone slightly better and bigger, right? But as you can see, they all look the same. Bigger phones every year with slightly smaller notch and bigger cameras. All right, the next piece of hardware we're of course all waiting for is a potential Apple Mixed Reality headset. We already have different brands competing against each other for the best reality headset, right? Always lighter with better screen resolution, faster response rates, more powerful while increasing the fields of view. Well, Apple has to do at least as good as these brands if not better to take as many market shares as they can. And just to put things into context, you have two kinds of headsets, right? Augmented reality and virtual reality. So AR uses the real world, while virtual reality or VR is completely virtual. So VR requires a headset device, which has never been done by Apple yet. But AR can be accessed with a smartphone or an iPad. And Apple has already nailed this part. They have specific infrared sensors and built-in apps to enhance your reality. You can also scan through the things in a few seconds and measure real-world dimensions too. Now, Apple has to figure out a way to make VR accessible, better, and connected to the Apple ecosystem too, because that's what Apple has always done. Again, Apple is really good at taking something that already exists to make it better. For example, Apple Music was launched in 2015 to compete with Spotify. Siri was not the first virtual assistant, but it was the first assistant on a smartphone. Another whole trend for the past years is the foldables. So it seems a pretty simple design, right? You take a phone and simply fold it in 
too, like a piece of paper. But it of course comes with drawbacks. The first one is durability, because foldables have a mechanism called hinge to allow the phone to properly fold in half. You also have limited real estate inside the phone since the hinge takes a lot of place. So Apple has to find a way to have a great battery life, great specs, and put everything inside the phone. All right, the last innovation is pretty exciting, the Apple Car. The idea started in 2014 under the name Project Titan. Apple created hundreds of patterns from sensors around the car, batteries, safety, and processors too. And if that car has to bring something new to the world, it will probably be autonomous driving. And Apple has apparently worked on a chip with the power of four Mac chips. And if you have enjoyed this video, well, feel free to check my Invest With Me series right there, where I invest in Frontal of Live each month. Thanks so much for watching. Feel free to leave a comment down below, subscribe if you want to see more, and as always, I will see you in the next one.